Good afternoon, YouTube. It is Tuesday, July 1st, 2014. Time is 5.23 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. We are looking at Tropical Storm Arthur. Uh, recently upgraded this morning as of 11 o'clock from a tropical depression uh, named Tropical Depression 1 to Tropical Storm Arthur. As you can see on the satellite imagery, Arthur is taking on very nice uh, cyclonic features. And it is kicking off winds onto the uh, short eastern central shoreline of uh, mid Florida uh, in the range between 18 22. I saw some 25s in there earlier, uh, 24 23. Uh, so some of the winds are coming on shore currently. So I guess a good place to start is actually answering the question what happened with uh, Tropical Storm Arthur? How was it allowed to develop? Uh, and why is it strengthening so quickly? All good questions. Uh, let's put aside for a fact, you know, the radar anomalies we've been looking at, etc. Right now, Arthur is uh, situated over extremely warm waters uh, off the east coast of Florida. There's relatively minor vertical shear, uh, so it, there's not that inhibiting factor uh, that you might get. Uh, you, it, Arthur probably will encounter some vertical shear as it goes north, but it's not likely to be enough to break this storm apart. Uh, also, taking a look at it, it's not an overly big storm. Uh, that in and of itself uh, provides Arthur with some advantages that a larger storm like, say, Sandy uh, wasn't allowed to have. I'll get into that in a minute. So let's take a look at the uh, GFS model for a minute. Uh, this one, uh, the GFS, is one of the, just one of several models uh, that's been tracking uh, Tropical Storm Arthur. Uh, so far, it's been the most accurate. GFS is not always accurate, but in this case, it is handling the storm uh, pretty much on track and pretty accurately. So this is actually a loop of uh, the next couple days, and what we're seeing is uh, Arthur is located right down here along Florida. It's going to track uh, up right across uh, Cape Fear, or Cape Hatteras, North Carolina, and at which point it's already going to be fairly intense. It'll, it should it should hit North Carolina as a, at least a Category One hurricane. Uh, there's some indication that it actually may slip into a Category Two uh, because by 36 hours we should see within 36 hours Tropical Storm uh, Arthur should be Hurricane Arthur uh, with wind speeds approaching uh, 90 miles an hour by 36 hours. Uh, the difference between Category 1 and Category 2 is only 5 miles per hour, so if it hits 95 miles per hour sustained winds or wind gusts of 95 miles an hour, then we're looking at a Category 2 hurricane. Uh, I really don't think at this point that's out of the question, uh, based on its history so far of rapid intensification. And as it moves north, it, it's just not going to encounter a lot of blocking factors. Uh, there's, no, there's not really a, a nice uh, blocking high ridge up here. The ridge will come into effect as it crosses North Carolina, and you'll see the ridge lines here from the high pressure off to the west will give Arthur a nudge, sort of a, a, a nudge away from the coast once it hits Virginia. Uh, but up through Virginia in the Delmarva area right below New Jersey, uh, that's going to be that's going to be an area of concern. Uh, there's a lot of uh, open waters right in here. Uh, a lot of heavily populated areas, shoreline, uh, resort towns along Virginia, uh, southern New, New Jersey has Cape May, of course. So this is a, this is going to be a storm we need to watch carefully for the East Coast, uh, particularly from North Carolina right around here, uh, up through the southern uh, shore towns of New Jersey, and even off off to the northeast uh, along Long Island right in here, uh, which is. Always a bad area for a hurricane to hit because Long Island happens to be particularly exposed to uh, strong uh, tropical storms and or hurricanes particularly. So as we watch this, we can see uh, the low pressure that tropical storm or at that point it should be Hurricane uh, Arthur produces. Uh, it's going to be at around 982 millibars, which is, is a fairly significant storm. Uh, Sandy, I believe, was 982 might have been lower than that. Uh, my memory's, yeah, it might have been lower than that. But, but in, in any case, Hurricane Arthur is going to be a nicely wound storm. You can see. Let me see if I can pause this for you. Hold on one second. By the time Tropical Storm or Hurricane Arthur gets to the North Carolina area, you can see this is a very nicely wrapped uh, storm in terms of isobars. 
meaning that's going to that's going to kick off a lot of winds. Uh, very, very tight gradient right here. Uh, and yeah, so that's going to be a very strong storm. Everybody along North Carolina at this point really should be taking precautions because uh, although the warnings are up along the coast right now, uh, the, the warnings are not up for inland as yet. Uh, it's probably still too early for the National Hurricane Center to throw out those warnings. I'm going to go ahead and do it now just because I, I have a really good feeling that this is just going to really uh, impact that, that Cape area of North Carolina significantly. I know it's the 4th of July weekend. I know people don't want to hear it. But unfortunately, this is what we have to deal with. Uh, it does not appear it's going to be going anywhere. There's just nothing to steer it away from the coast at this point. Taking a look at our um, Tropical Storm 4 surface winds, don't see much change, although we are seeing a deepening of the uh, wind field. And, of course, our areas of um, uncertainty to the east and west. So, of course, this storm could jog and stay right along the coastline, in which case North Carolina, Virginia, New Jersey, Connecticut, Maine, all will be affected. Uh, if it stays off to the east, then and it uh, remains of a small size, or media, you know, significantly not a significantly large storm, then the coastal areas will only have to deal with maybe some minor coastal flooding, etc. Uh, rip currents are going to be a problem no matter what. But uh, we have to, at this point, if it stays off to the east, um, most places, with the exception of North Carolina, North Carolina I think is going to take a hit no matter which way this goes. Uh, so I think we should just get that out of the way right now and just be comfortable with the fact that North Carolina in this particular area is going to have some trouble uh, coming up in the next couple days. Of course now within the next 36 hours, as uh, we, I've been talking about, this tropical storm should be upgraded to a hurricane. Uh, this is the area of probability for hurricane force winds and again North Carolina clearly affected uh, not so much into the Delmarva and New Jersey Long Island area although tropical force winds probably will be felt along this whole area uh, this we'll have to see how this develops in the next 24 hours by 36 hours this should be a hurricane uh, I don't think there's any question about it at this point So looking at our warning zone and cones, uh, basically by 2 p.m. Thursday, uh, National Hurricane Center has it as a hurricane. Uh, probably that'll be a Category 1 at this point over here. <clears throat> I would say by 2 p.m. Friday, uh, when it starts getting crossed, when it's crossed over North Carolina, this should still be a very uh, strong Category 1, if not Category 2. It, it's just not going to hit any, any real shear. It's not going to... Um, have any inhibiting factors to any great extent uh, to really lessen the, dam the, the potential damage from the storm. So we do have to watch this very carefully. Taking a quick look at the current warnings, uh, tropical storm warnings are posted for East Central Florida uh, along the coastline and inland as well as offshore uh, going up through Georgia, South Carolina and midway up through North Carolina. That's as of today, July 1st. Uh, at 5 p.m. Uh, over the next hours, 24, 36 hours, expect these tropical storm warnings to you know, start gradually going north uh, along the break points uh, up along the east coast. Uh, but right now, these seas are going to be rough. Um, anywhere, that I think the, the maximum sea heights I've seen so far are about 31 feet. Uh, that's not the kind of weather you certainly want to be in any kind of small vessel. Uh, you would need something fairly significant to be able to, to deal with 31 foot uh, seas on a continual basis. So why don't we want to underestimate Arthur? Well to begin with, like I said, um, the size of its storm of the storm itself uh, is one of the main things that I'm looking at. Uh, some people are too, but not many. Uh, a lot of them are just focused on the tracks. <clears throat> when you're looking at a storm like Arthur, the size of the storm does matter because what this storm doesn't have like Sandy had that this doesn't have this is not in a, a huge massive storm in fact it's quite compact uh, which enables it to do a few things the first is it enables it to not draw in dry air from the Northwest <clears throat> uh, or allow cold air to come into the storm because it just doesn't have that far reach so it essentially is operating on its own independent of inhibiting factors that a larger storm might actually draw into it. 
What does that mean? That means this storm is going to be allowed to circulate without worry of pulling in cooler air or drier air. In fact, it's going to be able to draw in moisture fairly effectively as it comes up because these waters are warm and it's just not going to break apart like, like a larger storm might. Um, so that's one thing. The other thing too is the, um, hold on one second, sorry for the interruption. The second thing is the uh, conservation of angular momentum. Uh, phys it's a physics law. Basically, um, something that's smaller and tighter is going to be allowed to spin a, at a greater rotation than something larger um, would. Think of like a uh, ice skater, figure skater, uh, when they have their arms outstretched and they're doing a spin and they pull their arms in tighter, what happens? They spin quicker. Same, same kind of principle applies here, although not exactly the same, but um, it's basically the same type of principle. So two major things is, is that physics principle, uh, uh, conservation of angular momentum, as well as the fact that it's just small enough to avoid most of the inhibiting factors you might see, which would be uh, cold air or dry air induction into a system. It just doesn't have that. This is essentially going to be allowed to free, uh, freely travel right up the coast, uh, barring anything coming out of the northwest Canada or even across directly from the central plains, which I don't think we're going to see over the next 36, 48, 72 hours. Okay, so at this point, I think it's uh, prudent for everybody just keep your eyes on these videos as I put them out. Um, I, I strongly suggest uh, people subscribe, at least share the videos. I have all the videos set to remix. You can remix them. Um, but please get the word out, especially if you know people that live along North Carolina, Virginia, South Carolina. I'd even go with South Carolina as well. Uh, South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, Delaware, uh, De that whole Del Mar Marva region down here, uh, anyone in New Jersey, Long Island, I'd be concerned about as well. Uh, you know, like the videos, share them. Uh, if you know people that have not subscribed yet, get them to subscribe. Uh, it costs them nothing, and, and this is all done for public safety reasons. Uh, I think there's a lot of misleading information out there. I'm not convinced that this track is 100% accurate just yet. Uh, even if it is accurate, uh, that does not mean this, this area won't be affected. Uh, there's still a good chance that tropical force winds are going to hit this east coast region. So, uh, like, you know, like I said, share this video, subscribe if you haven't, follow us on Twitter, uh, at Flash News Net, the links are in our, our on the main page, um, and listen guys, stay safe, I'll do another update, as soon as we have more information, uh, I'll put the technical information from the uh, Hurricane Hunters into the description box, and that's about it for now, time is now 5.43pm, stay safe.